Thank you, Ismail, for this very kind introduction. So uh, I want to start off with the principle of a horizontal barrack bypass system. So uh, you basically see the rack, which is angled to the approach flow with a certain angle. And there's also a rack cleaning machine and overlays. And at the downstream rack end, there is a bypass, which is used to allow for safe fish downstream passage. And here on the right side, you can see a picture of a hydropower plant, which is equipped with such a system. You also see the cleaning machine, the rack, and the bypass inlet. So I started my doctorate with a state-of-the-art analysis. So I sent a questionnaire to hydropower plant operators, which have such a rack installed such that I really exactly knew which kind of horizontal barracks were already built. And I could then construct model racks, which were representative for the already existing racks. And in task A of my doctorate, I investigated the hydraulics of these racks, which includes a head loss assessment, where I proposed equations to estimate the head losses for a wide parameter range. And I also measured the velocity fields to see the effect of different parameters. In task B, I focused on the operational aspects which is mainly the clogging with, with floating debris. And in task C, I focused on the hydraulics of the bypass systems, also by conducting uh, velocity field measurements in the laboratory. And in task D, I conducted live fish tests uh, with the horizontal bar rack and different fish species. And one of the main outputs of my doctorate is the design guideline, where I summarize the most important findings on just a couple of pages. Due to time constraints, I will just focus on the live fish tests within the following presentation. So let me start by showing a sketch of the flume. It's actually the exact same flume where Claudia was conducting her experiments. So you can see the acclimatization compartment, the submerged cameras to track the fish movements and the horizontal bar rack with the adjacent bypass. The goal of the study was to investigate the fish behavior at these horizontal bar rack bypass systems and to quantify the guidance and protection efficiency. And I also wanted to find out the effect of the hydraulic param parameters on the fish reactions. And these are the same uh, parameters which, was which Claudia was describing. So the approach flow velocity was varied between 0 0.5 and 0 0.7 meters per second. And I also investigated different velocities at the bypass inlet. And I also tested the same fish species, so spurling, barbel, nace, brown trout, Atlantic salmon par, and European eel. I distinguished between different fish reactions to quantify the efficiencies. So you can see the horizontal bar rack and the bypass. So fish could obviously enter the bypass or pass through the rack, but there were also refusals. And the fish was counted as a refusal when it swam close to the horizontal bar rack or to the bypass, but it did neither pass through the rack nor the bypass within the maximal experimental duration of 30 minutes. And there are also the inactive fish, which were not swimming close to the rack, so they were excluded from all analysis. In total, I conducted almost 300 experiments with uh, three fish per experiment. And I then defined the fish guidance efficiency as the ratio of all bypass passages over the total number of active fish. And I also defined the fish protection efficiency, which also accounts for the refusals because these fish were protected, but they were not guided. Now I want to show you an example of three spurlin uh, at the rack with a clear bar spacing of 20 millimeters and approach flow velocity of half a meter per second. So you see the spurlin swimming together in a, in a school, which is very typical, and they swim downstream with positive three attacks, so they face against the flow, and they swim downstream in zigzag movements, and they are thereby guided towards the downstream rack end and they also um, accept the bypass very quickly. And these fish are also very small, so they could have um, physically passed through the rack. And the other example I want to show you is an European eel, which shows a completely different behavior. 
It approaches the rack with negative free taxes. So head first, searches along the rack, and then directly entered the bypass. So uh, on this plot, you can see the average fish protection efficiency for each species where the error bars indicate different hydraulic conditions. And on the x-axis, you can see the ratio of the fish width over the clear bar spacing. And I parameterized um, these data points with the equation, which you can see here on the right side, which basically says that very small fish are not protected at all. Large fish are physically blocked if this ratio is larger than one. And in between, the uh, protection efficiency increases with the increasing fish lengths or decreasing clear bar spacing. Um, all these data points are for a clear bar spacing of 20 millimeters, but I conducted also experiments with 50 millimeters for trout, which you can see here. And there is just one data point which is far off the line, and this is the spurlin. And I have to say that this model assumes that fish do rotate to the side to pass through the rack, such that the fish width and not the fish height limits rack passages. However, for spurlin, we observed that spurlin hardly rotate themselves to the side to pass through the rack. So in this case, it might be possible to replace the fish width by the fish height on the x-axis, which also moves this data point close uh, to the prediction line. However, these are all laboratory experiments and this should be verified uh, in monitoring campaigns. So in the next step, I wanted to compare my uh, lab experiments with monitoring data from the hydropower plant Rappenberg Halde in Germany. It has a design discharge of 22 cubic meters per second, clear bar spacing of 15 millimeters, and the horizontal approach flow angle of 30 degrees. And this is a very interesting monitoring campaign as stone nets were installed behind the turbine and the bypass such that it was possible to, to calculate the efficiencies in the exact same manner as I did in the laboratory. So here you can see the results, the fish protection efficiency for job uh, for different size classes with the constant clear bar spacing from Rottenberg Halde. And this uh, dashed line is now the prediction line I was presenting on the previous slide. So you can see in this case, it fits the monitoring data very well. So now I want to show you how this equation can be applied in practice. So let's say we take an approach from literature to calculate the turbine um, survival rate, in this case, Monten uh, 1985. And uh, this basically says that the survival rate decreases for larger fish. It can then be combined with the fish protection efficiency from the present study. And this depends now on the clear bar spacing. So here, we have 10, 20, and 30 millimeters. And if we combine these two equations, we uh, derive the green curve, uh, which builds up a local minimum, which you can see here in this case, for fish with a total length of 15 centimeters, we reach a total survival rate of 85%. It basically means when the fish are smaller, they have a higher turbine survival rate. This is why the uh, total survival weight increases again, and if fish are larger, they're more likely to be blocked by the rack, so the total survival weight increases as well. And if we install now racks with smaller clear bar spacing, this local minimum is not so pronounced, and it shifts towards smaller fish. Then I want to sum up the most important things. Uh, I've showed that horizontal baric bypass systems are a state-of-the-art technology for fish downstream passage. And uh, I developed equations to predict the head losses for wide parameter range. I also showed that uh, these racks physically block larger fish, but they also have a partial behavioral guidance effect for small fish. This means that not all fish which, which would theoretically pass through the rack really do pass through the wreck. So they are protected to a certain extent. And if all the limitations of uh, lab experiments are carefully considered, uh, they, the results can be compared to monitoring campaigns. But we have to be very careful and it's really important to also conduct these extensive monitoring campaigns. And the proposed equations allows for estimating the total survival rate. 
And just one uh, yeah, brief outlook. Ismail already mentioned that there's an ongoing doctoral study at ETH uh, where the horizontal bar rate is electrified and it's tested whether the efficiencies can be improved. So I want to thank you for your attention and I want to finish off by showing a picture of the largest horizontal bar rack, which is installed in Europe. It's uh, in Zurich at the Limmat River with a design discharge of 95 cubic meters per second. So thank you. And I hope we have an interesting discussion. <laughs>